Hi everybody, it's Kevin at Bear Creek Honey. Uh, today what I wanted to talk to you about was um, a winter project that I'm currently doing. Uh, this project is not for everyone. Um, it was something that I stumbled across while watching videos on the internet and what I saw intrigued me. Um, it was from a film done in the 1990s in Germany of, uh, of beekeeping. And they used these uh, oh, extruded polystyrene, high density polystyrene uh, hives. But what really intrigued me most of all was they had homemade bottom boxes made. And although the video didn't really discuss the bottom boxes, there was enough video in different clips that I pieced together how it worked and um, pretty much, you know, what the dimensions were. So I decided um, to make this a winter project for myself. Um, the main thing that this intrigued me, this bottom box, was because it was so versatile in its usage that it, it, it made perfect sense to me. Um, is it a, a bigger project than building a standard bottom board? Absolutely. Um, from what I could gather, their bottom board was about the size of a medium uh, honey super. So that was my premise for building it. Um, but the hive has several com components, including a removable bottom board that you can see in brown, a removable screen front. Uh, the screen front is used for, uh, transport or to close up when, um, you're pulling honey off and you want to stop robbing in, all, in your apiary. And it also has a removable back end as well. Um, now, also in front, it has a, a, a few moving parts to adjust your entrances depending on your hive strength and uh, the time of the year. Uh, and it's uh, a couple of pieces uh, that are that are interchangeable um, that you move around um, but it, that took because uh, there was no definitive dimensions or how it was put together or even close-up photography of it it made it difficult for me to to do that part so I just had to do my best from what I thought that they were doing and I'm going to go through how I built this box in the following. Now, the first thing I did was purchased a few one by eight by eight foot uh, pine boards, and those will make uh, the bottom boxes. Uh, three boards, I should be able to get two boxes per board, so I should be able to make six bottom boxes out of this. The next thing I did was ripped the one by eight down to six and five eighths which is the depth of a deep and then cut four pieces that were 19 and seven eighths which was is the length of a Langstroth hive After you cut the four boards, what you'll have left is about a 16 inch piece and you want to save this uh, for um, your back board. Um, I might change the design um, in the future, but for now I used that scrap for the back removable panel.
I then took those boards that were six and five eighths by 19 and seven eighths and I put a three quarter inch by three eighths inch rabbited edge on each edge of each board. So there was, you know, four rabbited edges all totaled. And then um, there were four boards and that's going to be for two boxes. So just so you, so you know that. I had some scrap three quarter inch plywood laying around so I used three quarter inch plywood as my bottom board and as you can see how the how the rabbited edge fits on the bottom board perfectly and I cut that to size which is uh, 19 and 7 eighths and then the inner dimensions is 15 and a half inches I cut some scrap three quarter inch board uh, down to size. It's three quarter by three quarter to make up the uh, the frame for the uh, the ends. Uh, but I changed this design a little bit as I was going, and you can use a uh, a three and three quarter inch piece now. Here you can see where I used that scrap piece for the back end, uh, the piece that I told you to save that was your leftover from your board. That's the filler for your back. That's a removable panel so it doesn't get stapled in. It can be in a little loose and it fits in the rabbited edges. I then built a three quarter inch by three quarter inch frame that slides in and out and that frame will get uh, number eight hardware cloth screening. You can see I it's removable. That's the front. Then I attached some number eight hardware cloth to it and I used uh, some quarter inch uh, scrap lumber to, uh, to staple the uh, hardware cloth in place in the back end just to make it look neat and so it doesn't poke you. I added some uh, storm window uh, butterfly clips. You can find them in the hardware store in the uh, window section of the hardware store. Uh, and that, and I use, and I use three of them. And those are used to just hold in uh, your uh, screen front board. Well, this is used during travel or whatnot, or during robbing. And I did the same thing for the. Uh, back panel as you can see. You can use bent nails as well. Now you can get a good idea of the finished product and what it looks like. Uh, I still have some tweaking to do uh, as far as maybe how my entrances work. They weren't exactly lined up. I'm not, uh, I don't have a jigsaw per se. I just have a hand jigsaw so I did my best. Here's a view from the back with the floorboard removed. This is a winter configuration. The floorboard will be removed uh, towards late fall right about the time you do your uh, last oxalic acid dribble.
and uh, feeding. Just another view of the front entrance with the screen, removable screen installed. Now here's a good view of the two pieces, the plywood behind and the one by in front. Uh, the one by is cut out 3 8 inch uh, as, a, as an entry. And this is uh, a winter configuration. You can see the plywood goes all the way up to the bottom side of the plywood cover. There's just another view of that. I can probably slip some hardware cloth down there for half inch hardware cloth in, in the winter time to prevent any mice from getting in, but I'm not sure that they can get in a 3 8 inch opening. This is a completely closed configuration. You can see I just turned that one by board upside down and now we're completely closed off and we might use this for times maybe when we have a dead out and there's no bees in, in the hive but you still want to protect the combs. Um, I'm not sure when you initially maybe install a, a package in your hive you might have this configuration I'm not sure exactly but they do use it on occasion now this configuration right here is with the plywood board turned upside down and it allows an upper entry for the bees into the hive this configuration is for a uh, newer colony, maybe a weaker colony um, that you have and that you're maybe not feeding um, any sugar syrup or anything to. The bees can come straight out of the comb and right out. Most of the time when you have a strong hive, that plywood backer will be removed and it will be wide open. Here you can see the configuration with the floorboard installed and it butts up to those two three quarter by three quarter inch spacers and that that's your gap for your uh, your B entry into your uh, into your boxes. Just another view of that removable bottom floorboard but from the front this time. You can see the gap. Now here is a view of the box from the back side with the remove panel removed in the back. Now this is the unique part because you do not have to work from the front entry where the bees are coming in and out. You can uh, use this space to put uh, fondant or uh, sugar water or you can also uh, use it to um, you know put a sticky board after you remove the removable panel in the winter to uh, for a mite count but you can do a lot of different things from working in the back of the hive uh, so that you're not disturbing the bees flow in and out of the hive here's a picture of the uh, of the box with uh, a hive box installed on top here it is with the bottom closed and the upper entrance open This is a view through the combs. You can see the uh, the entry into the hive where the bees would enter. Oh. Now that entrance reducer, uh, that one by entrance reducer there, which is probably about two and a half inches high, uh, that reversible uh, entrance reducer, is unique in that it will get painted. 
uh, a different color. Now, let's say that you're you're the type of guy that paints all their high body bottoms the same color, maybe white. Well, that can be painted blue or red or green or yellow, and then that will be an identifier for the bees to come back to the right colony to try to prevent drift. Also, aids and queens if you have a mated queen in there or a, a virgin queen in there. Just another view of the front. Like I said, this uh, hive bottom is versatile. This is actually a, a paint roller pan uh, that can fit all the way in. I was just uh, doing a little bit of uh, experimenting into what size uh, I can use for uh, putting syrup in the bottom there. This is just a, uh, I don't know, Tupperware container, Rubbermaid container, 13 by 9. You can kind of judge the size. That will hold exactly one gallon. Now you can tell that there's space on either side there, so you could put a larger reservoir in there with straw and sugar syrup, and now the bees have all the syrup that they need. They can take it down very, very quickly. Again, this is just the a, a, a shot of uh, the bottom board removed. This would be our winter uh, configuration. We remove the bottom board and give the bees a lot of space down there. Uh, then they can hang down. They have a lot of, they have big space, but it's insulated and it's out of the elements. And that's, that's, uh, that's also good. And then, and just, and another thing for this configuration, the way I have it, you know how bees beard on the front of your hives and things like that? Well, this bottom box will offer a space inside the hive for maybe a cramped hive on hot days to hang out on extremely hot days uh, instead of hanging out on the outside of the, uh, of the hive. Um, I didn't show it in this video, but that uh, plywood board that you can see running up and down or vertically is re is removable, and that will be wide open in the summertime, in the hot summertime. Another benefit to this bottom box is that you can remove the floorboard and take your package of bees, or shook swarm as some call it, dump them into the bottom replace the bottom floorboard and put your hive box on top with the queen in the cage and the bees will migrate up to her. Now here is the bottom box with the entrance wide open and you can see that that plywood backer has been removed. You wouldn't want to use this configuration when you are supplemental feeding and have uh, sugar syrup in the back that would promote robbing in here. Um, you would want to close it up as best possible and that's another great feature of this style of bottom box that I, I, I'm looking forward to using. But this would be used like mainly during the honey flow when you have many, many bees moving in and out and your hive strength is kind of pretty much at its peak. You can also see the three quarter inch spacers hanging down. Um, they not only serve as a spacer for the uh, removable floorboard, but also it's a backer for or it's a stopper, I guess you could say, for that plywood, um, for the plywood backer. So it has uh, multiple features. Like I said, I sort of had to fly it blind um, in making this. A lot of moving parts. I don't have it 100% figured out, but I think you can get a good idea of how versatile this type of bottom box is and you can see all the space in there like I was referring to earlier where the bees can uh, 
hang out on warm days instead of bearding uh, on the front of your hive. Um, now what I haven't shown, and, and I probably will a little bit later, is uh, the two running boards that will go underneath the plywood uh, so that, you know, this bottom box isn't just sitting on the plywood, but I'll show that in a different thing. But again, that, that one by board that's a reversible, um, that will be painted a different color, whether it be orange, yellow, blue, whatever, uh, as a, uh, sort of as a, as a beacon to, uh, the bees as to this is your hive. That's not the one next door. So I don't think this type of box is for everyone. I definitely don't think that you need it. Um, you know, people have been beekeeping with those regular bottom boards for years with, with no complaints. Uh, I can just see the benefits in this. Um, the total cost for this was is still up in the air. Uh, I bought the one by fours or one by eights for five bucks a piece. So, you know, for fifteen dollars, I got enough for six sides and a lot of scrap. Now you got to add in the masonite uh, bottom board and a bunch of things. I'm going to guess these bottom boxes cost me about five bucks a piece total cost. That's what I'd have to say. Uh, if you got any questions, uh, let me know. Again, I'm still tweaking things, so dimensions are going to change from box to box. Uh, the biggest issue is I don't want to change the dimensions of the uh, removable front uh, board at all because pretty much that's going to be interchangeable so that when you remove all your fronts and you stack them in boxes you can just pull them out and throw them in any hive it really would, wouldn't matter so you want to keep that standard but I'm still going to monkey with how things fit or uh, how to better uh, put spacers in to uh, remove those or reverse those boards. Uh, still working on that. Here I've got the uh, hive bottom prime painted and I've got the entrance reducer, the reversible entrance reducer uh, that I talked about earlier uh, painted uh, fully so that's your that will be your target um, for your bees you know a different color than the rest of the hives um, I still haven't nailed down what color I'm going to paint this hive darker color maybe chocolate brown or darker green something like that so that the contrast is uh, quite a bit different but I want to make them all standard but uh, like I said uh, not quite done yet so I'm still tweaking on it these bottoms don't really have a name so I've just been calling them Deutscher Hiveboden which is German for German Hive Bottom pretty simple uh, if you got any questions or comments leave them below I'll try to do my best I'm still tweaking like I said uh, just a quick announcement we had our vi video B chat and had four people that uh, joined with uh, another two that have uh, uh, since joined so we were up to six uh, we're gonna have another bee chat here coming up in the next week if you have interest uh, in you're an upper Midwest beekeeper why don't you shoot me an email about your interest to Bear Creek Honey wi at gmail.com the last video chat we spoke for about three hours I doubt they'll all end up that long, but uh, for our first one, it was very, very fun, very, very informative. I think everybody got a lot out of it. Um, so until next time, happy beekeeping.